in this demonstration I'm going to create a little guessing game. Now this game is a little bit different to what you get under the just functions and input output and request integer in range. If you there's a guessing game here. Uh, this one is a little bit uh, different. It's a, I guess it's a bit uh, uh, more sophisticated. And we are not going to use uh, request integer in range. So let's give this function a name. It's called uh, guessing game, or you can call it actually more appropriately play guessing game, because that's how functions should be named. All right. So the the next thing you have to do is um, get the computer to guess something. So uh, we can uh, create a variable called computer guess and we need to get the computer to come up with a random number so uh, the way we use random numbers um, is uh, by saying random well one of the ways is uh, by saying random dot rand int now that will allow us to choose uh, or uh, it'll get the computer to give us a random number uh, between uh, the first one and the second one so we, we can put two values here. So if I put 0 and 10 here, it will give me a random number uh, anywhere between 0 and 10 and inclusive of 0 and 10. So um, now in order to use this, I also need to say import random. So uh, without that, it will not really work. So just to see if this thing is working, print it out and see if, it, if it's all right. So we call, we run this thing by calling this function. Uh, play guessing game and there you go. So if I run it again, it'll, it's going to choose something random right, so uh, The next thing we have to do is get the user to choose um, a, a number um, and you know we want them to guess it so we don't want to tell them uh, What the computer guessed because then it would be giving the the answer away the hint of, uh, you know, it will be a uh, It will be more than a hint so uh, we want to store the user guess in a variable called user guess, and I'm going to use request integer, and I will tell the user um, enter a value between zero and ten. Now this is um, hard coding the values. I will make it uh, nicer later. I'll make it a bit general later, but right now I want to get this to, thing to work, and so the, the user will enter something and then we need to perform a check. We need to perform a comparison to see if the user guess is or uh, to see uh, at least to see if it's the same as the computer guess. So we need to say if and if the user guess is the same as the computer guess, then we will say show information uh, you win. Right, so a typical message. Um, else um, we can say show information um, uh, wrong now this is uh, very uh, it's a very primitive game now you can see I missed a colon here and that needs to be there and uh, so what happens is it'll check it'll check if the user guess is the same as computer guess and this double equals means that it is a comparison when we use a single equals, it means we are assigning whatever that's on the right hand side to the left hand side. So this is a, a basic thing in most programming languages. Double equals means you are comparing and the answer of a comparison is going to be a true or false. So what you put inside an if statement is basically a true or false uh, question. Uh, is the user guess equals to the computer guess. So if it's true, only then it will say uh, it will show the information on uh, a dialog box saying you win. Um, otherwise, else it will uh, say um, show uh, it will show the information uh, dialog box saying you are wrong. Um, so let's run this and see how it goes. And um, so the the way it's meant to be run is like this. Um, enter a value between 0 and 10 that will tell me it will ask me to enter something and I enter 4 and it's wrong so it's not very it's not a lot of fun um, when you know uh, you have uh, only one chance to get uh, this thing right and it can be anywhere between uh, you know, there's a 1 in 11 uh, 
when there's only one in 11 chance of winning. So we want to um, let the user play a few times. So um, I'm going to create a variable called max guesses and I'm going to say they get a maximum of three guesses. So that's um, I think reasonable. So uh, the, the thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, repeat things. So if the user um, gets it wrong, um, I will repeat it. So uh, there are several ways of doing it and again this is the, the, the quick and the most straightforward way of doing it. There are very elegant ways of doing this but um, you have seen the use of uh, for, uh, for loops. So we will say for guess in range 0 to max guesses. So this will make this loop run this many number of times so which is 3 right now. So we will uh, get um, the user to enter something and we will compare and we'll say you win or you lose. So um, also to make my life easier uh, I am going to uh, show a hint because uh, otherwise we'll be doing a lot of guesswork and wasting a lot of time. So I'm going to say hint and uh, show that like that. Now if I run this it will generate an error because show information wants only um, strings here. So we want to convert this computer guess uh, which, is a, which is an integer into a string and we do that by um, calling the or using the str function. So if you put something inside str uh, str's brackets, it will come out as a string, everything is fine. So let's try to run this and see how it looks right Looks right now. Alright, so it's giving me the hint that the computer has chosen 5. So that's the real answer, but this is used for testing purposes only. Now, if I enter, say, 2, which is not 5, um, it tells me it's wrong, and it's asking me to enter again. So now if I enter 5, which is the correct answer, and if I choose it, it says you win, and it's still asking me to enter, so we don't want that behavior. So that uh, that needs to uh, that, that so we need we need to prevent that from happening um, again. So it, it always asks uh, for uh, the max guess uh, max guesses number of times. So how can we prevent it? So we can say if the user guess um, is uh, the computer guess, uh, if it's the same thing then we say uh, we show information saying you win and then uh, this is again a quick and dirty way of doing this we say return now this is not ideal and I'm just going to put a comment saying not ideal but we are not looking for ideal things we are just trying to get something to work and then we can focus on making things nicer later on so um, ideally we should use a for uh, uh, not, not a, we should not use a for loop we should use a while loop uh, and elegantly stop the loop uh, so, but anyway, um, we are going to do this based on uh, what you already know. So, uh, we when we put a return statement anywhere in the code, it will completely stop. So, I'll show you how this works. So, play guessing game. It says the computer chose seven. All right. So, I'm going to enter three just to get it wrong one time. Okay, it says wrong. And if I enter seven, which is the correct guess, and hit enter, it says you win, and then finished. So uh, it doesn't do anything further. It completely uh, gets out of the of the the, the function. So um, the, so wh why not uh, we tell the user how many guesses they have left? So we can do that by adding something over here. Uh, enter a value between uh, zero and ten, and uh, we can say you have str max guesses remaining so that message uh, it had to again uh, be done like this we had to put str around max guesses because max guesses is an integer so uh, now the issue is this um, couple of ways we can do this. Uh, we have um, 
uh, max cases but we are not doing anything with max cases uh, so it's always going to be the same value so I'll show you what it looks like so this is what the computer guessed 9 and if you enter a wrong one it says wrong and it still says you have three uh, remaining um, and it, it'll, it'll keep on saying you have three remaining but uh, that's not what we want so what we, what we might want to do is uh, the variable guess will go in the range 0 up to 1 less than max guesses so um, we can uh, use that uh, to our advantage so we can say max guesses minus guess all right so that way let's see what goes on all right so the hint is 6 so that's what the computer chose if I keep choosing one now this is the first time this is the first prompt it says you have three remaining guesses um, it says wrong and then it says you have two remaining guesses I keep getting it wrong and wrong and over all right so um, I can also finally show something over here saying um, uh, you lost because we know that if it ever gets out of this loop then uh, it didn't return so in other words it didn't guess this right uh, the user didn't guess uh, things right so if I run this now uh, the hint is 8 now if I keep on entering the wrong one each time uh, it says you lost so how can we uh, make it a little bit more flexible we can assign the min and the max to variables like that and use the variables instead and when we say enter a value between something and something we need to get that out uh, or we can we have to get get it from the actual variable itself otherwise uh, it's going to show the wrong information so so there we go and what else can we do so now if, if I run this uh, it'll show things based on the variables so so like that you lost right that's fine so um, another thing I can do with this is tell the user or give the user some hints as to um, how whether you need to go higher or lower so we can say if the guess is uh, equals they win and we return uh, and we can say elif as in else if the user guess is less than the computer guess we can tell them um, instead of wrong we can say um, too low or guess higher so it's up to you what you want to say uh, and finally else now the reason why we are not saying elif user guess is greater than computer guess is because well it can't be anything else it, it has to be either equals um, less than or well this has to be greater than um, so you can put this this is not going to be an issue but uh, it's a bit redundant and um, so you don't want to leave that sort of thing there all right so uh, if it's not equals if it's not less then the user guess is definitely too high so let's see how this runs um, I'm running it and it says hint uh, 7 that's what we need to guess so if I enter a value 5 right in the middle it'll say it's too low okay so I'm going to choose 8 um, and then it's going to say too high because the, the correct value is 7 and now I can sort of guess okay it has to be maybe 6 and 7 so uh, I can guess 7 but still I had to be lucky and then it will say you win so that's that's the code and it's a very basic guessing game in Jess